just uh, thank you for this time. And God, we, as we consider um, something as, as huge and wonderful and glorious and powerful as hope and, and all that is encompassed in that word, Lord, would, would you help us to uh, begin to unpack that a little bit this evening, and, and more importantly, would you please work in our own hearts? As we, are, as we are people who are filled with hope, then we are then people who give hope. And so for us right now, Lord, would, would you use your word through the power of your spirit to impact our hearts that we would grow even tonight in hope? And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, um, I'm not moderating. We're not going to have kind of like a moderator tonight, um, but I do have two uh, of my fellow board members on the call. So we have uh, Jason Kovacs and we have Josh Brake, and they are going to be joining me in just a discussion about, about hope. And I'm excited about this discussion. So this is unscripted. We haven't really, we chatted for like 10 minutes this morning about, Hey, are we going to do this? Let's do this show up with everyone, you know, be there. Uh, but other than that, we haven't really kind of planned anything out because I just want to, I want to be blessed to hear um, how you think about hope and how the Lord is, is working in your own life, you know, in, in this time, in this time when, um, you know, I, I know for me, this has been, uh, this last year has been a season where I've, I've certainly had ups and downs. Uh, as, I, as I speak to other people that are involved in ministry, I think it's, you know, a lot of people are feeling the same way. You know, there's been good days, there's been bad days, there's been good weeks, good months, bad weeks, bad months as well. Um, you know, just, just for several different reasons. And so one thing that we all could use a whole lot more of is hope. And so uh, as we begin this discussion, maybe we could even just try to talk about that term a little bit, you know, and that could take up our, our whole time. But, but when, you, when you think about that word hope, um, you know, how, how do you think that word is used culturally? And then, and then when we compare that to what the Bible has to say about hope, you know, what are your thoughts on the word hope? Maybe Josh, we could start with you. Yeah, sure. So I, I think there's two ways we can look at hope. One is is in that the temporal sense, but I think as Christians, we're we're more directed to look at it in, the, in that eternal sense. Um, but that's not to say that it's divorced from the temporal. Um, it, uh, we can probably do uh, a, a great disservice to the eternal hope that we do have by disregarding the temporal hope that we're given, uh, and. Um, I'll just to let, let everybody in a little bit on our life, um, uh, in August, uh, our family moved to Quebec uh, from, uh, from Ontario, uh, where I'm now pastoring a church. And um, it's been a hard, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a rough go in terms of transitions and, uh, you know, church development and leading and those kinds of things. It's not been easy all the time. Um, and we have been a family that has, has needed hope, and we've needed hope in, in the moment. And we've needed to know that, that God's word is true. And mm-hmm. I think that's maybe the primary way that I, I have to think about hope. And that will help me encompass both the eternal and the temporal, that God's word is true. And, um, you know, I, I would just say that by the providence of God this morning, uh, I, I in our house, uh, both my wife and I work, and uh, I'm on mornings. So I, we have four kids, so they're all around the breakfast table, and I read scripture um, to keep things sane, <laughs> so kids aren't going kind of nuts. And it gets us in the Word, and and I just pray in light of a chapter. And uh, we're in First uh, Kings in 17. I'll just read a few verses here, and it's it's uh, Elijah and and the widow, and she's saying. Um, He's coming. He says, like, can, I, can I have some, something to eat? And she says, as the Lord, your God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now I'm gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and die. And uh, wow, I mean, I, it just came to me like how many people are just feeling that way right now in our world, uh, in, in circumstances in their lives. Then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. So give me all you have left, okay? (laughs) 
Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son, for this is what the Lord, uh, the God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. And I was just, it just struck me anew. Um, what is my hope in? What do we talk about hope? We talk, we talk about hope that God's word is true. And that is an, that's in an eternal sense. So one day we who are in Christ will all be hopeless. We won't need hope because it'll be realized. It'll be there. <laughs> but in a temporal sense, it's believing that what God says in his word is true. And then living in light of that. We'll probably unpack that a bit more. But um, I would just say out of the gate, my hope is that God's word is true. And I'm going to live in light of that. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. Amen. What are some of your thoughts, Jason? Yeah, yeah. When you first asked that question, I thought, you know, the culture. What, what does culture think? What does our world think when uh, when they think hope? And I, the first thing that came to my mind was, I, I think it's like wish. Like, mm -hmm. What do I wish would happen? What do mm -hmm. I want to happen, but probably won't happen? And um, man, I think that's that. I I know like a, a lot of uh, people I meet with in counseling, even <coughs> Christians, like we 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 can take on that that definition of hope as well we can be tempted to sort of treat hope that way as also you know like i wish god would do this or i mm. I, I hope but it's like a it's like a an elusive sort of uh uh dream and uh and and so i i know i've been tempted that way um especially i mean especially this year where it's like oh gosh so many things that you know ne i never thought would have happened are happening and um, and really challenging um, our faith and, and that, but but hope, you know, biblical hope is like Josh. Josh, amen to what you're saying. Like God's word is true, and the only thing I can add to that is like, and God is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. God's character, God, God is faithful, uh, and so we can, because of who He is, we can really believe Him, and uh, and not just what He's done and what He's doing and what He. But, but also what he promises to do. So I think biblical hope is rooted in the character of God and the word of God and the promises of God uh, that, that it really, it, he really will bring to pass. And that COVID and, and anything that we're going through will, will not thwart his plans or purposes. Mm -hmm. So I, I, come, I have to remind myself and be reminded of that often um, these days. I love how you use that word wish. I think that's a great contrast of what we wish would happen and what, what, um, you know, what will happen in terms of God's character and his mm -hmm. word being true. Um, I'm reminded of all the things that we, uh, well, oftentimes the way we pray can be, can be wishes, mm -hmm. right? We're not, <laughs> we're not yeah. praying with hope. We're praying with a wish. Well, yeah. uh, you know, maybe God might, um, but we know that whatever God gives us is good. And so we can go to our heavenly father and he's not going to give us uh, a rock <laughs> or, a, or a snake. Uh, he's going to give us good things that nourish us and uh, provide for us in whatever way that his good hand deems fit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I love that contrast. I think that's a good one for us to keep in mind. Am I, am I thinking of this as, is this wishful thinking or is this truly hoping that what God says is true? Mm -hmm. um, and that that's hard. Um, uh, I, you know, just in, I don't know what kind of circumstance everyone's been in, um, but even for you guys, but you might, you know, in, in ours, maybe it's uh, um, the hope that a certain vote will go a certain way mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. hope that uh, the COVID numbers will drop to this level um, or those, those kinds of things that we might actually place our hope in and where we'll all say the right, the right answer is Jesus. And right? that's the Sunday school answer. Our hope is in Jesus. Uh, what we what we actually practically hope in mm. isn't Jesus. It's something different. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nathan, how how do you think people can practically put their hope in Jesus, or even if we want to be more broader, like the Word of Christ? How would you how would you see people practically doing that? Yeah. So I think there's there's a lot of different ways of thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think again that word hope it really means it's a, it's not, it's not like a wishful thinking. It's an absolute certainty, right? Like this is going to happen, right? Like, like Abraham's hope, like this is, this is certain. So I think we could see 
um, our hearts growing in hope as, as we're laying hold of the promises of God, right? As, as we're laying hold of, you know, uh, the truths that God tells us about himself, as, as we're laying hold of, you know, the, the truth of the gospel, as we're, as we're so um, one, one text that comes to mind is, um, is Romans 15, 13, right? It's Romans 15, 13. I have it um, right here. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, right? In believing. May the God of hope, he's the God of hope, fill you. So hope comes to us from God. And he, he's the one who does the filling. I want hope. I need, I need the Lord. He has to be the one who's filling me with this hope in believing may he fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the holy spirit you may abound in hope mm-hmm. so if we want to abound in hope uh, it's going to come from the god of hope who fills us um through believing through mm-hmm. believing again laying hold of of the truths of god's word so so there's there's that sense in which i need to really lay hold of promises for today right Promises where, where God says he is going to provide, um, where God says he is going to be with us, where he says that his grace is going to be sufficient for us. He's going to strengthen us. He's going to, he is going to be our help. So, you know, I think, I think it's, it's accurate to say that as, as we're thinking about hope, you know, Jesus is our hope, right? He, he is our hope. He is our, our hope for today, right? In the same way that um, that God doesn't kind of throw us grace like a football, right? He doesn't kind of stay over here and he's like, go along. I'm going to throw you some grace and we catch grace and we're okay. God is our grace, right? He is, he, it's, it's him. It's him with us, helping us in the same way. It's, it's Christ in us. It's, it's God with us. Um, who is our hope today, knowing that regardless, regardless of what happens today. And again, this is where we need minds renewed, right? Regardless of what happens today, he's with us. He is going to be enough for me today, right? And, and I think for a lot of us, I know for me anyway, that looks like I got to take that situation by situation, right? Mm-hmm. I can't be thinking 16 situations down the road. I can't be thinking of the third meeting today. I need to be thinking of like getting out of bed, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, then, and then like making it to the first meeting or whatever, whatever it is. I need grace uh, for that. And so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so, so hope for today, but then, you know, as, as the song goes, hope for tomorrow as well. Right. So I'd, I'd love, I'd love to talk a little bit about that too. Um, how do you, how do you feel the hope of glory <clears throat> informs our living today? Mm. That's, that's, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, what comes to my mind is uh, when you say that hope of glory is Christ in you. Right, the the hope of glory. So, at, just as we as we were thinking about tonight, uh, you know, one of the things that, that the Lord has just been bringing me back to, and it's been uh, multiple years now, but it he he just keeps bringing me back to the doctrine of our union with Christ. Mm, and for me, that's been maybe the most life transforming, re- mind renewing, like balm uh that i've experienced like soul refreshing thing that that uh that i've i've found um over over these last number of years and and more even more so now in this season so it for me it, it really practically like this past weekend i went away on a little retreat and just spent a lot of time sitting with uh with and meditating on my union with jesus in john 17 where uh, it talks about you know, God, Jesus in us, and us in Him, uh, that we might be perfectly one. And uh, and then it says that the Father loves us as He's as He loves Jesus. And uh, so, because like you were talking about earlier, you know, the, our hope is not something that that God gives to us per se. It's it's like a thing. You know, His grace isn't a thing that He gives us. Uh, it's it's a person. It's Jesus, and and Jesus is is nearer to. I love. I love. Augustine has this line in Confessions. He says he is nearer to us than we are to ourselves. 
uh, I think meaning like we, we can't even fathom how near Jesus is to us. And I, and I need to be reminded over and over and over of the hope of glory, which is Jesus in me now, but will one day be in perfection. Cause to, to, cause, because now like I know that I believe that I'm one with Jesus and the father loves, loves me the way he loves Jesus. But I, I can believe that maybe theologically, but to really believe that, and live in the awareness of that, that Jesus is present nearer to me than I am to myself. Like I need to, I need to continually hear that over and over and over again. And, and, and I, it is actually encouraging. Like, like I have the hope of glory now, but, but one day I will have it in perfection. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and man, I can't wait for that day uh, because it is frustrating sometimes to, to, continually uh forget and and feel like i just don't i don't really uh i wish i could i i I wish i didn't forget that he's with me and that he's near that he he's in me and i'm perfectly loved perfectly secure all that all all the wonderful blessings that come with being united to jesus and his righteousness so that's that's what i think about that i'm trying to connect to that every day and i need to be reminded of that every day I I love that answer. And Nathan, I'm wondering, you know, as we think, you know, I think, I think again, that that's that eternal perspective on, on hope, hope realized. Um, I'm wondering in terms of who we are as counselors, as people who are looking to speak biblical truth into people's lives, how do we both introduce and, uh, and as far as, you know, the, the spirit enables us <laughs> infuse hope into a situation that seems bleak, despairing, and, you know, it would be hopeless. What, what's the, I don't want to say what's the angle because we're not, we're not giving platitudes. Mm-hmm. So what's the way that we introduce hope into a counseling situation that seems hopeless? And of course we, we counsel ourselves, right? So this is self counsel <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before we give it to somebody true. else. Yeah. 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 I mean, going off of what I, uh, what I I just was talking about, I I try to remember that in counseling real practically, Jesus is already present before I show up, before I get on zoom, Jesus is nowadays at zoom, but Jesus is already present and he's working and he's speaking. Mm -hmm. And so my challenge is like, how do I, as a counselor, bring not just the words and the, uh, and you know, uh, but how do I bring Jesus? Uh, and, and and there's a sense in which I can't bring him. It's it's the Spirit who does that, but He uses our words. And and I, and I, and I think that that's really. I mean, I'm still wrestling through that, but that really is something that's a lot of, that's on my mind, and actually has really I think helped my counseling uh, to to help people to see that they're not alone. That there's a person that embodies hope. And that person is with them. Um, but I'm still learning how to do that well as a counselor, I'd say. So I, yeah, I'd love your thoughts too. Yeah. So Jason, it sounds like really what you're doing is uh, you're going back to the gospel. You're, you're explaining the gospel again. And um, you are reminding the individual who is in this, this hole, this dark place or the despairing place um, that the, that the message of Christ is alive and active and the word of Christ is alive and active and Mm -hmm. uh, that the person of Christ is not divorced from the thing that they, that they are associating themselves with in some way. Like, yeah, I'm a Christian. So I'm here talking to somebody who's going to, who's a Christian. I'm having this terrible marriage. So I should go to a Christian counselor because we're Christians yeah. But you're actually saying what you're doing is you're bringing Christ, the hope of Christ, into that into that situation. Yeah. Um, I wonder, you know, one one of the things that I found to be um, uh, maybe uh, I guess it's always humbling for me when I think about it because pride is something um, I don't know if you guys struggle with that at all, but <laughs> you know, it, it comes up. You just see it. It pokes its head up all over the place. It could be something as simple of simple as you know maybe how one of my interactions with my kids or, or my wife or somebody in the church or how I'm thinking about planning something, but pride is all over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and God's word tells us that um, he opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And 
I don't know a single person who I've spoken with who's been hurting and felt despair, who hasn't wanted God's grace, Mm -hmm. who hasn't wanted his grace. You know, they might be mad at their husband or their wife or all these other things, Mm -hmm. but who hasn't actually wanted God's grace to be present. Well, once you kind of define everything and peel back all the layers of angst that, you know, yeah, I do want God's grace. Mm. And then you, I, 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 you know, I never want to say just, but I think one of the things we can point to is our own heart posture before God and believing that his word is true. Mm-hmm. That he, he gives grace to the humble mm-hmm. and that, that is a blessing. And that's really hard um, you know, a lot of us probably talk with people who are in marriages that are really, really tough, really hard, might be on the brink. Um, and it's hard in a marriage when you feel like the other person is, you know, they're the tool in, in the relationship uh, to humble yourself. That's really, really hard. That's, that's really hard. But God's word is true. Right? And he gives grace to the humble. And there's all these different ways that, you know, God's word talks about uh, how we treat one another. Uh, all these one another's the, the, the love, uh, a description of love, these kinds of things. And our hope is that when we live in obedience to God's word, um, not that the result that we want will always come about, but that in, in clear conscience, we will, we, will, we will be able to worship him. And mm-hmm. if worship is our end goal, right? If we're saying this is, a, mm-hmm. this is an issue of worship, mm-hmm. ultimately, mm-hmm. Uh, then we want to be a people who are humble and the only reason we have hope in any any efforts of being humble is that is that God's word is true. We we have a hope that mm-hmm. uh, that He does give grace to the humble. Yeah, Amen. A couple quick questions for you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, one to Jason, which is just: Do you have any like really specific scripture passages that you often go back to that really build and that hope in? your union with Christ, like where would you go to? And then more generally for any of you, um, you know, as you're talking about hope, like are there particular hymns or songs that you guys kind of go back to, to help build that hope? Yeah. 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 I mean, John 17, where Jesus is praying, which is just incredible. Jesus praying for us. Like it's like sitting in a prayer meeting and Jesus with Jesus and he's praying for, for me, but John 17, 23, in particular, like very specifically where it talks about how the father loves us um, as he loves Jesus, just, and that because of our, that's because of our union with Christ. That, that's one I go back to. I, I just, I, I meditate on often. Um, and uh, yeah, there's others, but that would be one that I point to. And then a song, I mean, the first song that comes to my mind just because I, I, I've over this last year been going back to it often is uh it's called Promises by I think Maverick City Music, and uh, it's like a nine-minute song, um, just all about the faithfulness of God that He never gives up on us, um, always faithful. Um, so I, I, for whatever reason, God has used that song to to minister to my minister hope in the character and faithfulness of God many many times over this last year. That'd be one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say anything that really, in terms of songs, um, that really points us forward. Um, mm-hmm. I think that a lot, a lot of people, just like just like us, um, can get stuck in a narrative that this is all there is, right? That you know, if this if this represents, you know, God's story right? That this is, I'm not stuck on this page and this page is never going to turn. And so this is where, this is where I'm at. And, you know, so, so again, just like, I think for people that are stuck, we need to flip the script that you're, you're part of a much, you know, you're, you're a, a bit character in a far bigger narrative, you know, and, and that this, this whole thing is going somewhere, you know, um, that, you, that you're not stuck. I know you feel stuck and we all, we can all feel stuck, but, but this, this story is moving forward. Um, if I, if I could share just some scripture here, um, this is, this is where I've been kind of camping out a little bit lately. So it's in Romans chapter eight, um, in verse 18, I'm just going to read. So it says, Paul says, for I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. 
For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first roots of the spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope, we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes in what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, Paul says something similar in 2 Corinthians 4. He says that this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So Paul doesn't get the scales out and say, okay, we put all of the sufferings of life on this side, and then we put the glory. That the, the, So like that word, like the all-encompassing, like, being in the presence of God, the new heavens, the new earth, glorified state. We don't kind of weigh those out and say like, he's like, you chuck the scale. You get rid of the comparison. It's not worth comparing. It's like one of those Louis Giglio videos where it's like you start off with the earth and then solar system and then galaxy and then and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And then right by the time you get to, um, you know, like the third star, it makes our star look like dust and it keeps going, keeps going, gets infinitely and like your, your mind can't, it's like the suffering of this present time is like the earth. It's so, it's so small. And you get, you get to the glory, which is like the hundredth star down the list. And you can't, like, you can't compare the two, right? This is what's coming. Like, this is where the story's going. The glory of Christ is going to engulf everything. Um, so flipping the script, bringing a new narrative, into into their situation, into my situation, into our situation, um, is important mm -hmm. for living in reality, right? Mm -hmm. This this is reality, you know. This this is this is happening. The, this this story ends better. I mean, using Paul Paul's words, like better than we can. We, there's nothing we can compare it to, mm -hmm. you know. It's like it's like the kid on Christmas Eve who doesn't know what's in the boxes, but, but this is going to be good. This is going to be really good, right? Like as, as believers, we ought to be living with a sense of that, this anticipation, like this is going to be so good. Um, but we can't compare it to anything yet. Anyway, the try not trying to take up too much time, but man, that's good. <laughs> good so, brother. Good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Cam, did we have any more questions? No, not currently. Okay. Do you have a favorite song, Nathan, Josh, or or song of uh, that 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 encourages hope? Yeah, um, I, I think for me, uh, it's um, there is a fountain filled with blood. Mm. It's I mean, it's just it's such a I find it just such a gritty kind of like gross song, but it speaks speaks of what was necessary for my sin so clearly like i i can't i can't sing that song without tearing up mm -hmm. uh and uh just the whole hope that 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 song takes us through in terms of um being free from the sinful stain uh and and what that means in terms of being ransomed and Mm. Uh, this this theme of redeeming love and mm -hmm. oh just like sort of the, that eternal song that we will sing it's it's for me that's it it embodies sort of the hope for me I, I love that song yeah that's one for me anyways yeah yeah one for me would be um be thou our vision um, love that song again. It's just, it's just a, it's a perspective changer, right? It's like, mm -hmm. wait a second. Okay. So there's, there's more than today mm -hmm. really. And I need to be reminded of that like again and again and again, right? It's like, yeah, there's a whole lot more than today. There's a whole mm -hmm. lot more. Yeah. 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 I think it's been really encouraging. Um, I, I do think that one of the challenges in counseling is helping people who are struggling to see tomorrow in their situation, um, 
have the capacity to begin to grasp uh, eternity with a perfect and holy God and what that means. Mm -hmm. And uh, our problems can seem really, really big in the moment. And so I think, I think that is a challenge, but if we're, you know, we're, we're people who offer nothing but Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. That's, I, I, that's all I got mm -hmm. <laughs> guys. That's all I got for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I only got Jesus and, and I'm just going to keep talking about the hope that we have in Christ. And so I, I think that this is actually a theme that runs through um, all of our counseling. It runs through those things when we, we have a conflict with a family member or, <laughs> or just thinking about our own, uh, our own mortality. Uh, certainly in the days of COVID, that's probably on the minds of many. Um, but, but hope is a theme that runs throughout the Christian life. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know actually how we have conversations about uh, biblical change that are void of hope. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's, there's a few markers I always try to keep in my brain. Like how, okay, what are the things? Do, do we hit on this in some place? You know, do we go there? And I, I think that's just one because you know, most people are coming in and they don't have hope. It's a reason they're coming to talk to you. <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> they're, they're struggling to figure these things out either practically or even principally. Yeah. They need somebody to remind them of the hope they have mm -hmm. in the risen Christ, the resurrection power that's real and active and alive. So building on that idea a little bit, Josh, there's a question that's just like, yeah, you're right. It's really hard mm -hmm. uh, when, when someone you're trying to counsel can't see beyond their pain and, you know, they're questioning God's goodness and they really have no hope. Like, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are the, what are the first little baby steps to slowly getting their eyes just off only their problem and beginning to shift their, their gaze? I don't know how you guys approach this, but I, I tend to approach it first by trying to shift the gaze to Jesus, who is their hope, right? So um, I want to put their eyes on Jesus. If they're a Christian, what has, what has happened? What has, what has he done? And what does that hope point to? So it's, it's actually bringing them out of, the, out of the situation altogether and just saying, if this thing doesn't exist, let's just say wave a wand, it's gone. Woof. Okay. Where's your hope? <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's peel away all the other stuff right now and get right back to the core of who Christ is and what he's done for you and what that means for you to be adopted as a son or daughter uh, of the living God. And for me, at least that, that's an approach I'll often take. Uh, maybe a secondary one is first steps, small steps of obedience, um, there's often feelings of guilt associated, and I think rightly so, feelings of guilt associated with disobedience. So, you know, when I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not doing this, but <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm in an argument with my wife and I'm flipping off my wife, um, you know, the first thing is uh, don't flip off my wife. You know, like that's, that's one of those things. How, do, how does God call me to, to treat my wife? What does that look, how does that look differently? And so trusting that as I do those things, um, I'm honoring God and uh, he will afford me grace as I humble myself before his word. Uh, and so I think those are just like sort of bigger picture thing in terms of Jesus. And then um, like uber practical is some of those things of like, Hey, you're doing this and God's word tells you to do this. And it might be, it might not always be a negative, like stop doing it, it might be start doing right. It's not always, it was not always a negative thing, but. Those are two ways that I like to try to introduce hope because um, most times I find that people are coming to me. It's not when um, they're just wanting their, their best life now, you know, their things are going great. And I just want to kind of tune up. It's I find by the time people get to me, by the time they, they, they're, they're pretty, they're pretty down. They're, it's pretty bleak. Um, so yeah, hope is always the first thing. And those are a couple ways that I introduce it. It's mm. good. Good. One, one thing that I've been doing real practically with, with folks is uh, it's from Genesis 3, right after the fall, Adam and Eve sin, and they're experiencing probably what I would imagine the greatest uh, experience of shame and guilt that any human have ever experienced, the greatest sense of hopelessness that, that maybe anyone has experienced. Uh, God 
doesn't, I, I think rightly so God could come. If I was God, I would have, you know, come in on the scene and, you know, what, you know, what did, what were you thinking? You know, it's the first thing that comes to my mind if, if I was in, in, in God's shoes, but it, this, this is beautiful picture of God coming and saying, where are you? And he asks this question, where are you? Mm. And uh, he knows where they are, but they're hiding. They're, they're, they say, we were, we were afraid. We saw that we were naked, talking about their shame and, and their fear. And, and uh, so I find a lot of times people that I meet with are in that same sort of place, fearful, feeling shame, guilt, mm -hmm. lack of hope. And uh, to hear the Lord enter in or the example of God coming in to, to Adam and Eve and saying, where are you? I'll ask people that I meet with that question, where are you? And I'll encourage them to hear that from the Lord as the Lord asking them, you know, to, even when they're on their, you know, spending time with the Lord to hear him asking them that question, where are you? Mm -hmm. And just mm -hmm. to answer it honestly, because mm -hmm. God already knows where, where they are, but um, that's been a helpful one just to help them to, mm -hmm. to see that okay, even in my darkest moment of shame and hopelessness and fear, just like I mean, God comes to me, and and then and then you can go on in that passage, and God then asks another question. He's like, it's the first biblical counseling session uh, in the Bible. He's, God says, "Well, who told you that mm -hmm. that you were naked?" And then He says, "Well, what did you do?" So there's a great model there. And then He goes on, and what does He do? But He He promises the gospel, Genesis three fifteen, and then He clothes them with garments. So He takes off their, you know. They're the clothes they put on, the leaves and whatever they were, and he puts on clothing, which for, for points forward to the cross, points forward to Jesus, and uh, and it goes even up further from there. It's just in God's provision and 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 care and love and grace. So that'd be one one real kind of baby, practical thing that that I'll do with folks, you know, just getting them to to reflect on those questions. Yeah, where am I? Who whose voice am I listening to? For, for my hope and my, you know, my security and, uh, and then, and what do, what do I, what do I do? Um, That's good. Yeah, one other thing, Jason, uh, and I want Nathan to answer this too. I feel like we can go on this one for a while, but let, let me be quick on this point. And that is, um, I find that a lot of people that are coming are feeling alone in their sin or their shame that's associated with their sin in the brokenness of the, of the world that they're existing in. They feel very, very alone. And um, I try to remind them that, you know, they are, the fact that we're talking, that, you know, we're both Christians and we're talking means they're not alone. And the body of Christ is, is, is a physical manifestation of the living Christ, right? We, we are his body. And so we aren't alone. There is hope that God, again, I'm going to go back because word is true. He, he has not left us. He won't, won't forsake us. We're, we're with him and uh, we have, we have a larger body that's come around us. So life breath in our lungs gives us purpose for the day. Um, if you ate a meal, <laughs> God's chosen that you will eat a meal for some purpose. He's nursed you for that moment, for that hour, whatever it is. There's some purpose. It's for his glory. What is that? And people aren't alone. They have the body of Christ. Not everyone does have that in really healthy ways. So I think in a counseling setting, that might be the only place that they feel like they have that. So I think it's really important to uh, identify with people in their pain and, and give them that hope that they aren't alone. It's, it's yeah. not just them against the world. It's yeah. not. It's Christ has, <laughs> Christ has overcome the world. And we get to be a physical manifestation of Christ alongside them. And that, that, that often, oftentimes I find just lifts a bit of the veil that can sometimes be really, really darkening for a person. Mm -hmm. Just so they know they're not alone, that they're truly loved. Yeah. Amen. Um, maybe two other things, too. One would be um, asking somebody, when, you know, can, can you recall a time when, you, when you're full of hope? Yeah. You know, what, what, what was going on at that time? Like a, a time when you were filled with, with hope for today, you were filled with, with hope for tomorrow. Um, you know, what were the kinds of things that you were really focusing on during that time, you know? Um, and, and then, and then also number two would be really helping them to spend time with the Lord. Right. 
um, because there's just not going to be any hope from, from God doing it. Like God, God needs to be the one filling that person with hope. So I need to spend time with him. I need to abide. If I'm not abiding, um, then I shouldn't expect to be filled with hope. So just helping people to begin to, uh, to get into the word and, and to start spending time with the Lord and starting to pray. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And then, and then what you said too, um, you know, what is, what does fellowship look like right now? You know, especially, you know, for, for someone who is maybe on the, on the periphery and, um, isn't really connected relationally, uh, are, are, you know, are there other ways that they can be connected with us? Yes. But then are there some other people that maybe they could get connected to as well? You know, do we have anyone in, in our circles that we could say, Hey, could you maybe spend some time with, with this person? And, and could you have a, you know, a, a friendship and, and, and just fellowship together, you know, whether it's on zoom or, or whatever. Um, yeah, we, we need, we need, uh, we need the body for sure. So, all right, Cam, I think we're like 12 minutes over, right? Yeah, but that's, it's probably a good place to wrap. Yeah. The, the goal is to do this somewhat frequently, but not make any one evening too, too long. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, um, yeah, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So again, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Um, I've been encouraged. I hope you've been encouraged as well. And again, again, um, may the God of hope, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Amen? Amen. 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 Lord bless you. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you soon. Good to see everyone's faces. Thank you. Good to see everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.